very good day and warm welcome. Gracing you today, as usual, is me, Natasha Hussain, and my co hosts, Bhumika and Agam. Today, we are tackling the topic of brand loyalty, which we went into a little in our last episode with some excellent examples from you three. Well, uh, Pari is not joining us today, so I know we all are somewhat familiar with it. So, could you start by telling us what brand loyalty is? Well, it is a customer's dedication to a brand or company over their competitors, um, no matter the price or accessibility. And are you aware of the different levels of brand loyalty? Oh, I am. Uh, there are a few levels of loyalty, actually recognition, uh, preference and insistence. Uh, could you explain those for us? Okay, so uh, recognition is step one, of course. You need to find a way to make customers, uh, consumers aware of and recognize your brand, uh, be it a uh, distinctive logo, a uh, celebrity endorsement, a uh, catchy tune, or anything. Uh, and I think it's also a good idea to make the unique selling point of your product as a part of this initial uh, exposure, but it's not really mandatory. And uh, even if you're not into cars, you're, you've likely uh, heard of, heard of uh, brands like Porsche and could also immediately be able to uh, conjure up images so, of, of cars, sleek and expensive sports cars. Uh, this is also highly dependent on the brand's marketing, of course. Uh, even relatively niche products uh, can have a wide outreach in the uh, if, if the marketing is done correctly i'm jumping ahead a little here uh, but the element of recognition is important in a brand of uh, consumers uh, that too depending on the brand we like to make uh, it, it, it uh, known that we use this uh, brand to convey our status preferences etc this is also an important aspect of uh, brand loyalty i believe um, and the last point is a vital one, which we will return to later. And in this instance, I do believe that the first impression is the best impression for a consumer base that is always looking for the next best, best thing. It is very important for your marketing to be smart and to incorporate your USP as you suggested. So once you've gotten your consumers to recognize your brand, you have to get them to actively desire your brand over you you know, your competitors who may also be running their own campaign to attract consumers. This is where your um, individual brand identity and marketing comes in. So Apple, for instance, is getting back on top in terms of brand loyalty and popularity. They are returning to the quality that initially made them so popular in the first place. Uh, I can also do brand insistence. So it's the level of loyalty that every brand wants, essentially. So this is where your customers identify very heavily with your brand, right? Whether they have actually bought your product or not, this has to be um, accompanied by good customer service, which also includes customer convenience. Um, special and efficient uh, products combined with it almost always guarantees brand loyalty. Why do you believe it is important to do this in the first place? So uh, it is actually more expensive to uh, attract new co uh, customers than it is to keep them. Uh, I mean, it's stupidly cheaper. A study by uh, Bain and uh, company found that an increase in uh, customers' retention by only 5% can bump your profits up to 95%. Existing con uh, customers are much likely to respond to your uh, marketing and uh, try your new product. That's very true, Agam. And it's five times more expensive to draw uh, in new buyers. Exactly. And uh, customer loyalty can also act as the testimonial marketing. There are people who have tried and tested your products or at the very last loved your uh, messaging. Also true. I read that around 50 to 60 percent of consumers have more trust in products and services used by those in the first friend circle. Yeah, and um, research and development for a new product is expensive and resource intensive as it is. So feedback from and conversing with their existing customers is extremely helpful for exposure, you know. And yes, there's always the customers, you know, 
uh, the chance of bias feedback from your loyal customers. So potential customers may take it with a grain of salt, but the benefits do in fact outweigh the cost. How do you think businesses can build brand loyalty? So the most obvious one in my opinion is to build a brand identity for your consumers to recognize and relate to. All brand strategies must ask you questions when designing things. You know, they have to work things out like the story of your brand, you know, the story that the brand is trying to tell, if there if there are emotions, um, you know, if there are emotions that customers should associate with your brand, its personality and so on. So you have to think of it as a human being almost. Yeah, that reminds me of a buyer persona. We were talking about la uh, about last episode. It fits in uh, with the idea of the consumers being an extension uh, of the brand itself. Yes, and uh, it is important to know uh, what your customers care about. Uh, good business yeah. is uh, rooted in it, in uh, shared values, to be honest. And uh, loyalty is uh, built easily when uh, customers and businesses have something to relate to. We've already discussed extensively, you know, the need to be proactive and attentive and, at this, and you know, that applies here as well. So it's important to engage with customer grievances and any form of feedback, especially if these interactions can be seen by others on platforms like Twitter. Yes, and uh, speaking of which, personalization is also super important when uh, while building uh, brand lo loyalty. I realize we sound a bit uh like a broken record but uh, it goes to show how extensive these uh things can be getting birthday emails or holidays holiday wishes from brands no matter how common it is always makes uh consumers feel like they are on the same wavelength as the company uh this is an essential part of building trust and communication within the brand yeah and adding to that providing incentive for your existing uh, loyal customers to spread the word about your brand always help increase your company's exposure. Now, I would like to come back to the comment made by uh, Agam about consumers wanting to convey a message to their peers, which is also where I want to relate the lessons which we can learn from uh, fandoms about brand loyalty. Um, I don't remember who said it, but 2022 was said to be the year where entertainment and business blurred as customers have taken to creating content which often coincides with their own business activities. And this is also where online communities and digital marketing really come into play. Uh, it's more organic if it uh, comes from your users, but brands have also uh, been known to create online spaces for their users to engage with. Yes, I know we all are somewhat familiar with online fan communities. What do you think business could learn from them? Well, I think the concept of empowering your uh, consumer base, you know, you have to give them a space to communicate with your brand and other customers. So we all want to be a part of the community and transparent communication. Um, this is far more likely to inspire loyalty. And uh, all fandoms are uh, built on some form of criminality and uh, shared values. Uh, rather than pushing a lot of content onto your customers all the time, make them feel uh, welcome to interact with your company, which is uh, good for boosting your engagement. And it's uh, actually good uh, for publicity in general. And that concludes today's discussion. I heartily thank all two of you uh, for participating today as well and you all all the listeners uh, for your kind attention good day bye bye